Welcome to Syntax. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Front End Happy Hour podcast. Welcome to this week's JS Party. Live from Shipshape Studios, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and me, Charles William Carpenter III. That's right, Charles. We drink whiskey and talk about web development. I mean, it's all in the name. It's not that deep. This is Whiskey Web and Whatnot. Do not adjust your set. Hey, everyone. We want to invite you to join us at All Things Open. All Things Open is the largest open source tech web conference on the U.S. East Coast. It's hosted annually in the heart of Research Triangle Park in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Target audiences include developers, engineers, decision makers, and open source community members, and anyone else involved with open source software. Four to 5,000 people from all over the world are expected in October. We're going to be there. More information can be found online at 2024.allthingsopen.org. I really hope I don't have to spell that for you. What's up, everybody? As you just heard, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot, your favorite podcast about the Byzantine Empire. And <laughs> the- your hosts, <laughs> Ravi the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter the third. Mm. You're so you're so unsure about that as time goes by. But it is interesting because the fun banter that we have around that kind of should be going away because yeah. they just heard that already. In the I intro, know. I just like to point. drop random shit in the beginning, though. Yeah, the Byzantine Empire. Yeah. Today's episode is It's Fucking Friday. That's true. That's, that's what it's at. Maybe we need a new segment called It's Fucking Friday. <laughs> it's, you know, there's something there. I don't know. Well, yeah, the day of the week know, is kind of design. irrelevant these days, though. Like, you know, yeah. it's I'm busy all the time, regardless of whether it's quote unquote work or not or whatever. Right. So there's no Got reprieve. Home. Yeah, yeah. We had a big storm last night, the monsoons here, and it was substantial rain. Okay, and that's fine, but we have no drainage, and you know, mm. so that's kind of a problem. And there was a, a lot of wind. That wind did gave me some weekend chores. Let's just say that. We have some <laughs> like shade sails set up, broke the ropes on a couple of those. We have some larger bushes that are now like leaning like the Tower of Pisa, that I need to figure out, like, okay, there's a 10-foot bush pushed sideways at, like, probably, like, 45 degrees over or something. It's, like, pretty Mm. substantial. So it's like, how do you get this back? I don't know. Yeah, you can push stuff back, but it'll sometimes not hold when you push it back. Like, we had a tree do that, and it was like, oh, you could just set it back up and, like, tamp it back down. It just died and then blew over the other direction anyway. Oh, gosh. So (laughs) So there you go. You've really uh, upped my spirits about this chore. Yeah, I think, like, I'm just going to take, like, some big ladder and Sarah and I will just, like, try and use that to press it back to the wall. And uh, Yeah, leverage is your friend. Leverage is our friend, and so we're going to see. That or we just get it. You know, what caused this was a bunch of wind. And so what if we just get a really big fan and no, no. <laughs> you know, you get do all your neighbors to to sit back? out there and go, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> tight with the neighbors. So that'll help. All right. Well, on that positive note, everyone, let's talk about today's whiskey. And, and got a, sorry, a really big in bottle. Advance. Yeah, my we've hands got a large are bottle. actually uh, very yeah. large. It makes, makes, look at this. This is a normal size bottle. I just have big hands. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Today's we're, we're having the Kings County Distillery. It is a spiced flavored whiskey it is only 80 proof 40 percent alcohol by volume this is new york city's oldest whiskey distillery which you got to kind of wonder it's in brooklyn like what is that like 20 years i mean i don't know i I can't imagine there's any like long operating distilleries from 100 years ago Mm. i don't know yeah yeah no mash bill no age statement but it is flavored so today we'll be talking about this one in the category of flavored whiskeys Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely has like, it smells like like a Christmas wreath a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like a spice cider, but like not necessarily in a good way. It smells like a very... spice cider candle. That's yeah. what it smells like to me. Like, yeah, like if you maybe go to Juniper, Yankee Candle or whatever. Yeah. Maybe, I don't, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to love it. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> You're setting yourself up for success here. 
Yeah. Lots more smells, but that's very much like if you were to get like a Christmas wreath or spice cider candle, that's what it smells yeah. like. Like if you go to cut down a Christmas tree and you get mm-hmm. some sap on your hand and then you licked it later, probably what this is going to taste like. <laughs> So the the side note there is that you've just revealed that you do you tried to lick the sap off. No, no, I'm no. just I'm just speculating. Tinge more cinnamon. Yeah, like I don't even know if people. Oh, whoa. Yeah, definitely spice cidery. Yeah, some star anise and like What's oranges that on the finish. Yeah, maybe it's basically everything you would put it. What were those things? It used to be very popular, and you get like this bag of like potpourri, potpourri. Right. Mm. If you had like a winter potpourri and yeah. your grandmother, because who else would be still using potpourri, but like you have that, you know, it's that stuff. It's like all dried out and then you put it in this little bowl thing and then it goes on top of something else that kind of warms it. And then you get that scent throughout the house. Oh, that's yeah. what this tastes like. Like if I was to eat some of that winter spice potpourri, yeah. that's what this tastes like. Yeah. Also, like another old person thing, like getting a. A cinnamon broom or like a thing of pine cones that are like coated in cinnamon or whatever like right all, all of the yeah. above is what it kind of yeah it evokes all of those wintry which aren't so i'm not saying that at least for me in a bad way necessarily like these these aren't like that said it's hot august day where it's 101 <laughs> outside for me although i'm in a freezing office right now so I'm, you know kind of balances out i think this might make for interesting winter cocktails that's what i'll say yeah. about it. like if yeah, i put I this in a little it, eggnog i could probably fuck with that because that would bring some interesting like thickness and sweetness to it also yeah i think it's like all of the flavors are good i don't know if i like fully enjoy it as one flavor but it's like everything i'm tasting is good but it is a little more candly to me like it doesn't taste as food like so yeah it's just a little like a tiny bit off putting from that but like all the flavors are are pleasant All right. Well, I think we're prepared to rate this the highly technical scale for those listening for the first time. I'm sorry. You should be upset with whoever suggested this podcast. But anyway, (laughs) we have a highly technical rating scale from zero to eight tentacles because, you know, a dead octopi may have zero tentacles. Hard to say. And uh, zero being terrible, four middle of the road, eight amazing clear the shelves. Robbie and I will be rating this against other flavored whiskeys that we've had. We like to categorize, but you can do whatever you like if you go out and try this yourself. Does it mean hear your voice next? Yeah, I think you should go. There's Um, enough of me. I think uh, we haven't really rated a lot of flavored whiskeys, and we should do some more just because we do a lot of like nice whiskeys let's do some more yeah, we, weird we should stuff. get some more shit yeah you know, off the bottom shelf yeah yeah so not that this is bottom shelf i do like it i think it's pretty good compared to other flavored whiskeys i don't enjoy it as much because usually with a flavored whiskey i'm kind of wanting it to stand on its own with the flavor and be like super enjoyable i do agree this would be good in a cocktail or something more wintry my favorite flavored whiskey was that banana one ironically i knew you were gonna say it um, i knew you were gonna say it and yeah. much to my chagrin i agree with you yes it's everyone that i've given the it best to one it's like <laughs> i'm like all right like suspend disbelief here for a second like yeah, this is gonna be yeah. good try it and they're like no 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 like yeah try- oh it's actually good but anyway yeah. this one much less good than that i would say on its own not mixing a cocktail it's kind of middle of the road for me so i'd say about a four yeah i i have to agree like, I don't want to completely shit on it because it's not bad, but the flavors are very nuanced to a very specific context. And thinking that, like, you would have to mix it to make it tasty, to kind of, you know, it just isn't diverse enough or whatever. It just doesn't satiate enough on its own, but not bad for what it is. So we've got, like, so this comes in a few different sizes, and this was just their 200 milliliter, like, looks like a little pint, like Prohibition I'm sneaking around my whiskey pint, yada, yada, yada. It was like 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Worth trying, worth kind of hanging around for like, you know, special things. But uh, a four is fine. I wouldn't be like, go get it. But if you were like, I'm looking for something different for my eggnog, I would suggest this. Yeah. Or a spice cider. Like you don't need to spice your cider because it's already spiced. So just like put it in your cider. Get a nice fresh cider. Again, I think sweet is the missing element. And that's yeah. fine, right? Like whatever this mash bill is, doesn't have that. So this has a little bitter and, and all those other flavors that we mentioned. Just a sweet would round it out for me. 
Yeah, agreed. Well, okay then. No hot takes because it's just us. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we have hot takes. Too. I just don't know what uh, what they would be right now. Well, the answer to every hot take for you is tailwind for some reason. It's strange. You were like, Rails yeah. or Django? You're like, Tailwind. Tailwind. I, I don't yeah, need a back end framework. I write my uh, APIs <laughs> exclusively in utility classes, oh, and gosh. it just works. <laughs> I can't wait till you can use server in CSS and make your you know SQL queries right from your CSS. Mm. Something, like, I, something that could be a potential hot take that that reminded me of this guy okay. posted something about like most humans can't follow a conditional statement and his like explanation wasn't good it was like if i go to france where could i get a good baguette so it's like the first part is like if i go to france and mo- he's yeah. like most people will ignore that and just assume you're saying i'm going to go to france so where would you recommend but it's like a if then and I don't love that example because I feel like a lot of people would have that problem. But he's like saying that people can't follow that. And that means like over half of people that can't follow like conditional statements like that are that means those people aren't Turing complete. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what? That's that's like, some weird shit. Like, so there's this entire area of development for software folks or whatever else where there are weird flexes like that. And I think it's been bubbling up for various reasons, right? Like when people are talking about software complexity and full stack frameworks and stuff of that nature, but like it's come up a bunch in the last few days because of the Lex Friedman podcast and Peter Levels being on there and like, oh, I just use jQuery and PHP and I ship and I push right to production. I don't know if you've seen some of that stuff. I've seen some of the posts, yeah. Yeah, and people will kind of choose some like oh he's great or he's bullshit and all he cares about is money over like clean well-crafted software and this feels like one of those in the sense of like (laughs) i'm doing some geeky tech flex to show you how i can apply these paradigms to everything in in the world or something i don't know it does what it feels like to me yeah that's my thought yeah i don't know that i fully follow it But I guess my roundabout point there was like CSS is going to be fully Turing complete before half of humanity, which is hilarious. (laughs) That that is probably true. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) or definitely is true, right? But also if like somebody brought that up to you at a party, assuming you got invited, which we won't, but uh, had they, you'd be like, shut up. Yeah, be like this fucking nerd. You know who you are? You're not fun. (laughs) That's what you are. You're not fun. I hope that feels good though. Maybe you should go home and be touring complete yourself off. I don't know. <laughs> alone. Because yeah. nobody wants to hear that shit. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that said, you know, interesting analysis, I guess, to a degree. We are a web software podcast. And I do find some of those, like, rabbit holes interesting. But then I, like, check myself every once in a while. And I'm like, who cares? You know I've what this just... doesn't do? Pay a fucking mortgage. Yeah. I have reacquainted myself with the 13-year-old who would, like, find something online and need to fight with everyone about it and have a lot of fun with that. I, like, yeah, I missed that. Like, so I'm I'm here for all the drama. Do you um, plan to start to partake deeper in those discussions is what you mean? I think so. I just want to – I feel like I'm not very thoughtful. But I just, like, try to shit on people for fun. But, like, I do want to have more uh, educated – like discussions about that sort of these sort of things and like call people out for real reasons that was like, you're dumb. No, you're dumb. Like, yeah, um, no. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to engage kind of make it something, at least it doesn't matter. Like if your opinion is right per se, but like yeah. contradictory opinions do make for some entertaining threads. Mm-hmm. I have just been in the mode for a little bit because someone online was saying like a modern generations find replying with a meme as like, creepy and weird and i was like hold my beer yeah yeah gen z can just shut the fuck up because everything they think everything is weird meanwhile they use no real english in their sentences and like oh all the their own vernacular and all of that i mean whatever yeah. lots of generations come yeah up like they own. they think like we've we've gone gone full circle if you wear no show socks those those are dad socks now. You got to have the right. real tall socks. 
I'm like, <laughs> I think they just don't want like every generation can't like the stuff the last generation liked because that's like their parents. That can't be cool. So it's right. like, I get it, and I get, but it's just like, just shut up, just leave everyone to their own. Like it they've just, they've redone all the emojis too. They're like, oh yeah, this emoji means this now. So like, if I use it, I look like an asshole to like everyone who understands that. But I've been using this emoji for like my whole life, bro. Like. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's a it's an interesting point and it's really funny for me given like things are coming around the second time and then some for a few. Yep. So it's like, oh yeah, I wore those socks in high school. Of course, yeah, we all did that and push them down and pinch roll and all that bullshit that you're doing now. I already done it. Yeah. 40 years ago <laughs> feels like. And then I you know, I came around to to these other bits cuz I think I just came to more functional bits. I like no-show socks because it's a billion degrees here. So if, why am I covering up more legs when I've worn shorts to explicitly expose more legs? Yeah. And you don't have to worry about like anything about the style of the sock because you don't see it. So it's like. Right. But it's a good way of because there were some years or whatever where you just wore like no socks and just wore right. your shoes and made them stinky and whatever else. It's like. This is a good middle ground. Like, you know, there's a hygiene to this and still get to expose. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like this all, you know, kind of brings me back to everyone loving different frameworks and ways of doing things. And like, you know, you got the one camp that like learned React or like whatever a decade ago and they're like never going to change. And then mm -hmm. you've got, you know, the other camp that's like, oh, React came out. All right, I'll use that for three years. And then, ooh, Vue is out. I'm going to use that. And then, oh, oh, okay, Svelte is out now. And, like, you know, people want the new shiny, and they're always chasing the shiniest thing. And, like, I think we're we're doing the same thing, kind of circling back. Everyone's like, oh, God, I'm tired of learning a new framework every three years. Oh, PHP still exists. Let's use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard Laravel's good. I don't know. Yeah. Is that true? Let's... Uh... Maybe you get a Lambo out of it. No, you don't. Just the guy who created Laravel. I didn't even realize they have their own special hosting for the framework. So it's like the mm. same Vercel-like business model on that high level. Obviously, there's a whole lot else going on, I'm sure, for both sides. And I don't know. I can't even remember. It's like Laravel Inferno or Disco mm. Inferno. Anyway, I don't remember what it's called, but they do have their own hosting thing. And again, this comes out of the whole levels discourse of of stuff because he makes some comment about like how he doesn't understand these these companies making these frameworks and their own hosting specific for the frameworks and all the money going into that and yada 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 you know right like he's just a dude on, uh, on his laptop trying to ship his ideas yeah so good for him that's a good way to do it I think and there's it's obviously not for everything and everyone but you know pointing out what is and again it's not the end of the world these are businesses that people invest in and have careers and lives around and so they're trying to make money i get that but is it for you or not i don't know you know that's the other tech flex though is like oh man my five dollar vps can do the same stuff if you just don't be a dummy and learn a few things yeah that's true i don't know there's a, a lot of different ways to to do everything and I'm just trying to like hopefully make enough money for retirement before AI puts us all out of jobs. Mm -mm. So, so you're racing the clock. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's humans involved at some level though, right? Like you're not a CEO who like what hires a product manager who becomes good at prompting and then you just trust the computer is doing the right thing for you. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just feel there's, there's a lot more nuance there. Yeah. I mean, there's no way that things stay the same. I mean, not that they've stayed the same the last 10 years even, right? Sure. So whatever. Like, I agree that there's going to be shifts and changes and whatever else. It might be less people. I don't know. Or you might have to adapt that. And we're all managers. We're all computer managers, maybe. <laughs> you know, you've got to like... Yeah. There's, okay, just make sure you review the PR before a computer developer pushes shit in. I don't know. I have no idea what it is, but, and somebody still designs the system. Some, you know, it's yeah, just I mean, not so black and white. still changing. So like, yeah. you know, as new frameworks come out or like we all decide, or not even just decide, like a new HTML 
element drops and it like is useful for a bunch of stuff that we were like hacking around forever ai is yeah. going to be like oh the way you do it is you do this hack around way and mm-hmm. like humans will know oh no this has changed and like yeah ai You're will right. continue to learn and evolve as we keep throwing billions of dollars at it and throwing ourselves into an unavoidable disaster yeah. with the the environment i don't know i i do think it's kind of a bubble it's not going to solve everyone's problems it's going to change a lot of things and it will potentially get rid of some industries you know like a call center if ai knows the answers to everything theoretically yeah and can just answer you immediately you don't have to wait on hold and whatever yeah that's that's fine like yeah right like who's to say the customer service isn't displaced before development but you also got to think of it from the access standpoint which is like okay let's say the interview you mentioned or whatever is correct and like if you have access, if you are Amazon or you have like easy access to Amazon level infrastructure, like the the Devon thing that was like a year ago or something, like here's a completely AI software engineer. Who can afford Devon though, right? Like not everybody can afford Devon or a version or a replicant of, of Devon. So it doesn't end up, even if it works good enough and then whatever system that goes into that works there's going to be a whole rollout over decades, potentially. Yeah, I do so, wonder what the things actually cost. I haven't looked at all into does OpenAI actually make money off of like, do. or yeah, because I'm assuming like if I do a lot of really complex things and use a lot of your compute up and I pay a flat, what, 20 bucks a month or whatever, like they're probably not making money. That probably just yeah. like they're showing revenue growth, which brings new investors and whatever, but like. Their thing is interest and signups and also intake to continue to train the models and all of that like crazy stuff. That's the asset. The asset isn't really revenue at this point. The revenue just offsets cost. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know that it's super sustainable. I think it's kind of like, you know, we had the Uber for everything for a while and most of those have died off. And like, yeah, even yeah. the Ubers and DoorDashes of the world are like still like, oh, we're not making money. How do we yeah, do this? They're still struggling, yet somehow, like, the cost continues to rise. There's various con- conveniences of it that go away. Like, I, don't, I can't tell you. It must be at least, like, two in ten orders from, like, DoorDash are fucked up. Yeah. So then you have a whole customer service loop, and I'm annoyed, and now I'm not going to order with you for a couple of weeks. And the humans aren't making as much money either, so their, like, fees go down, the interest from people trying to do the gig economy like they can't get by either like i feel like there's a lot yeah. of fallacies across it so i don't know yeah yeah i saw somebody post a thing about like uh, a way to make money is to like buy a bunch of old cars and just rent them to doordash people because like either they don't have a car at all and they're looking for an easy way to like start doordashing or like they don't want to put a bunch yeah. of miles on their car whether that makes money or not or is worth the headache or not is is not for sure. But then it's like some DoorDash driver broke down all the costs of that and was like, he basically makes like a dollar an hour or something after all expenses, like nothing. Because, yeah. you know, you got to pay for your gas, which is like pretty much a daily thing if you're driving all day. I think he made maybe like three or four dollars a mile or something. I don't, maybe, I don't know. I don't remember all the numbers. He basically was down to like after all expenses and like everything, it's like a dollar an hour, or like basically nothing. Yeah, like you make whatever money, and then at some point you got to put new tires on your credit card or some bullshit like yeah. that. Like, yeah, you know, you get tires that are supposed to go forty thousand miles, and you know, you do that every year, and there's just like constant wear on them. They probably don't last as long. It's like yeah. yeah. So the gig economy, I could tell you, uh, yeah, the Uber for hotel rooms, Airbnb, short term rentals. That game sucks. Been, been in that game good. for, yeah. Or you um, mean as a as an owner, it sucks. As an owner, okay. As a, I have vacillated back and forth as a whatever renter, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've had good experiences and bad experiences renting for, for sure, Airbnb. for sure. Overall, I used to be a big fan of it, especially when traveling abroad, because it was a great way to just like 
get out of the tourist center and like be in a yep. normal neighborhood and like experience that, like, which I do value quite a bit. And that was always more important to me than like some of the amenities. But, you know, even that, like the fees have gone up and there's like crazy cleaning fees. And oh, yeah. Then but, and on top of that, they're like, make sure you clean it all yourself. And yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah there mm -hmm. was one like we went to South Carolina. We were looking for places. They were all like relatively affordable. But there was one that like, I forget the exact numbers. Let's say this one was like 100 bucks a night or something. And the other one was like 250 a night. So you're like on paper, like the $100 a night one, probably the one that's cheaper, right? But then you go yeah. like try to book it and it's like, oh, there's like a $500 cleaning fee at the end. And you're like, mm. the fuck? They do that, I guess, to like get around the like taxes and fees on a little bit of their money or something and just oh. straight up pocket that money. But there should be some kind of threshold. Like, there's no way you're paying that much for someone to clean that place. No. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, a deep clean of like a three bedroom house wouldn't cost that much. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a little, like you said, I think you figured it out. They're trying to yeah. get around some of the, all of that stuff. This just in whiskey.fund is now open for all your merch needs. That's right, Robbie. We're hearing reports of hats, sweaters, and t-shirts, as well as a link to join our Discord server. What's a Discord server? <sighs> Just read the prompter, man. Hit subscribe, leave us a review on your favorite podcast app, and tell your friends about our broadcast. It really does help us reach more people and keeps the show growing. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. So we've talked about a few different industries that software is involved with. I wonder, is there any industry? Because as some people may not know, we have run an agency together. It's not dead. It's just smaller. Yeah. Ship shape. And worked with all kinds of clients. Is there any client or industry that you think like, you know, all money being the same that you wouldn't build an app for? My initial thought was no. Like, if you're paying me enough, I don't really care. But I think they're, like, you know, aside from, you know, potential content that people may or may not like around, like, pornography or drugs or, like, things like that, like, you may not, like, love that. But if, like, the things you're doing are legal in whatever capacity, fine. I think the problem becomes, like, if you're promoting, like, terrorism or like like you get a call from isis and they're like yo here's a million dollars but you got to make us this dope website we want super base and we want next js <laughs> and like and oh geez then you'd probably have to be like god i wish i could take this million dollars but no like that there is a level where you would have to be like this is actively harming people or promoting people that harm people so right. i can't do that but in yeah. terms of like content that's like yeah like whatever like i don't care I do whatever. Mm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just I mean, me. I think it's an assumed you wouldn't do anything illegal. And I believe, like, at this point, like, interacting with ISIS, even if it was an astrostatic website, might be illegal. I don't know. I'm not really sure. How yeah. I think doing things. anything for them. Yeah. I, I think I would stray from politics completely. Just yeah. In general, either party, any of the parties, like, all of this stuff, I, I think I would just be like, I don't know. I they just, do have I, giant piles of money, though. Just for short periods of time, you know? And then you got to build rapport with someone else altogether. I don't think I would really like to do that, unless it was, like, a very cool technical challenge, maybe. I don't know. So there you go. I just said offhand. Yeah, like, assuming it's legal. So that means you can do something for the marijuana industry in many states. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Virginia is one of those. And yeah, you know, legal porn with adults and whatever, I guess that's fine. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny, though, because like what kind of vibes would it give you? you know, I used to work for National Geographic working on anything with that content for the most part, like used to I just used to think it was so cool and I would kind of geek out on it. So I guess I might, you know, <laughs> be missing that aspect yeah. of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's I, a pride in your work kind of thing where you don't want to share where you're working you might be a little embarrassed about it but right think, right like, like it's hard to share or something else i would yeah. i mean while i'm working on it i would think about like what are the challenges here oh, i'm dealing with like high resolution images and, and how do you like provide the best for the user but also like don't fuck the network or i don't know yeah i imagine yeah. that like 
you know, working for a porn site or something that you don't necessarily have to sit there and watch porn all day. They probably have like a placeholder video or like, well, I was just saying, like, can't you really just like have test data for yeah. your development that just isn't that like, do I need to see a dick in order to get this right? Like <laughs> if I don't, I mean the QA person probably does, but like you mm -hmm. don't. <laughs> right. Take, I'd mix it with a little water just to see if it oh, takes some edge off. That. That's not better. I wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. I would say avoid. It was partially accidental. This is me making an excuse. I don't want to lie to our listener. I forgot I put some water in there to clear it out, poured a little more whiskey as we were talking about dick. And <laughs> as we do. I, yeah, as we yeah. do sometimes, you know. And yeah, mixed it up. Don't don't suggest. So here you go. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, I think we agree then at some point, like the nature of the content isn't quite all that important for the most part. I think we're open to just like, Solving challenges. Yeah. I think actually this might be a weird thing to say and it's kind of unique to Ember apps, but like I can build an app for years and never know what kind of content that place I'm working at does yeah. because it's so opinionated. Like I don't need to know about how the business works or what all the specifics are. You've got your Ember data models. You tell me like what fields you're getting from the back end. I like wire it all up. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, you can do it without running the app. You just like run tests, they pass. Totally. Good. <laughs> Until you read or write your first is dick pic Boolean, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like hot dog or no hot dog. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Chat roulette. We see how that worked. Yeah. All right. Do you want to, you want to talk about this open source? This, I think you should talk about this because okay. this is basically your dream scenario yeah so i i want to have him on to talk more i asked if he liked whiskey he said yes so we'll we'll have him on to give the full story but uh okay. this guy caleb porzio he's like he does some laravel stuff and some something else i don't honestly i don't know a ton about him i've seen him See? post a few times php coming back coming back yeah. for you but Maybe he's you basically like he had a post on how he's making a hundred k a year on GitHub sponsors and then a follow-up post on how he made like a million dollars total so far or something. And he has like a lot of thoughts around how you should do things, how you should run a project. I think what's important to note is like probably until now-ish after, I think he said he'd been doing it like five years now. Mm. And I think probably until now-ish, he's like, like a hundred K is still a decent chunk of change, but it's not like, he's not super rich. So like no, no. even a million isn't super rich. Forever. Sure. It depends on the time period you acquire it in. And I, yeah, I don't know yeah. the specifics on on all of that because it wasn't like, you know, this year I made a million. It was like I made a million and it wasn't yeah. clear on was over, it over what time period it accumulated. So we'll ask. Yeah. Him. Anyway, he was like, you know, the important things are just make a good project. Right. And like have nice docs, like make it feel nice for developers. And then you can kind of layer on some things. Like you don't want it to be like a recipe site where it's like ads, 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 oh, ads. Oh gosh, like, the you, worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, those are you, content creators just clicking auto install for WordPress and But if you, you encountered know. that on like the Next.js docs, you would just never use Next.js. Like sure. so you have to be mindful of like your audience and, and what they're, you know, wanting to do. So like making that nice and then having like a couple subtle links, like join our uh, email list or like, you know, we have this new product launch coming, like click here for more info, not like random yeah. ads, just like nudging you towards other revenue streams. And mm -hmm. like the email list is super important. He said, so like, you know, you got to continue to build up your following, which we should probably build a few email lists for the various things we do. <laughs> I was going to say, we have dropped the ball there. Yeah. Yeah. I think everything is just hard to start, but if we started it, it'd probably be fine, which is also another one of his things is like, you know, this has been my problem a little bit. I'm also been like really busy, but yeah, I care are, about yeah. the amount, like the, the quality level of everything. So like we you got nice stuff for the this. details. Yeah. We've got nice stuff for the podcast. We've got some people that edit it for us now. We'll see if we continue to have them <laughs> or not. But you know, I uh, like that, that bar of like, if you'd like to help us with that, please visit whiskey.fund to buy yes. some cool t-shirts and other things that help us keep this podcast going. Yeah. Honestly, there's not a lot of, 
there's not a lot of profit margin on the shirts, do the memberships instead and then buy a shirt. Because the memberships oh. give you access to Discord and then uh, you get discounts on merch. Like depending Also on the tier. access to your couch if you happen to be in the DMV area, let Robbie know and you can crash on his <laughs> couch. Just yep. be a member. Yeah, anyway, what I was saying before that, like just not caring about how perfect it is. Like make a video, talk about your product, put it out there. You're the one that knows the most about your product, whether you're doing a great job of being a super professional you know, voiceover quality instructor or like just talking about it as a real person and putting it out there doesn't matter mm -hmm. as much as getting content out there. So like you're your worst critic, just like make stuff, put it out, which I think is great advice. And I think from a content creation standpoint, the more you flex that muscle, the more you do it and please just take these words and not my actions, the better it'll be, right? It's yep. just inevitably going to be challenging before you start doing it and you're just not going to be an expert until you get your own voice so yep. yeah i mean i think that that's been a big thing that i started to to feel more strongly about is like don't worry about perfection just start shipping and mm -hmm. that on with the levels conversation where it again is like at the end of the day he's shipping things that people value and he makes money from that and rinse repeat yeah. Basically. And you can always iterate if yeah. you put a product out and you didn't take the time to write any tests because you were just shipping to production, doing it quick and it starts to blow up and you're like, oh, damn, I hope this like doesn't break. Maybe take some time to write some tests, refactor yes. some of that shitty code. Like there's nothing yeah. saying like when you do a thing, it has to be that version. Even you record a video, you could be like, oh, I didn't love the audio on that one. Everyone loves this video, though. Let me just redo it with a better audio track or like. Whatever. Like yeah. there's there's nothing saying that everything you put out has to be your final product forever. Yeah. Like make a bunch of small bets. That's actually a very interesting builder community that I came across recently. Smallbets.com. They're not sponsoring us, but and it's this philosophy that you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket necessarily. Like try out a lot of ideas, push things out, see what catches fire and and even if they don't catch fire like see what just works and what if you had like four things that were working generally well well that's a good yeah. way to sustain as well yeah. it doesn't have to be the end all be all oh man i got a bunch of vc funding or i got acquired or i got whatever it might be like this brings a thousand dollars a month and this is actually like a nice supplement and it's fairly yeah. passive and you know you just yeah. you never know yeah, I think that is another big key. Like, you know, everyone is looking for the next big idea and you and I don't have the next big idea or we would have <laughs> lots of money by now. So, yeah, I do think there's something to that. Just shipping smaller products that are like lower maintenance, even if it's less, like if it's like $300 a month, but you do that 15 times, you start to be making a lot of money, right? Like, so, yeah, I think, if you have a small idea and you're like, oh, this is small or, oh, there's a competitor. This guy already did it and his site looks cool. Like, I'm not going to waste my time. Don't think like that. Just like, just build it anyway. Try to hype it up. Maybe people like you better than the person who built the other one. Then it takes off or like they like some small part of your product better. Like you never know. And it existing already doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. Yeah, no, for sure. Great points there. I want to talk a little what not though. Let's do it. Yeah, let's transition to that. First of all, just a couple of days ago, and by the time this comes out, it'll be well-known information if you are a Star Wars fan, which I am. And that, for me, means I try to take in all the content that I can, especially, like, the shows and movies and whatever else. I guess I haven't really read any of the books or the, like, non-canon things. Not that I'm opposed. It's just a time issue. Anyway, watching the shows on Disney Plus as they come out, very much enjoying that watched the first season of The Acolyte, and it was like, yeah, yeah, I like this. I want to know where this story is going. It's great, like, you know, the rise of the Sith, I guess, or wherever this is going necessarily. I'm not 100% sure, and apparently I'll never know now because they canceled <laughs> the show. Like, the way it ended was a little like... No this spoilers. Is clear yeah, no spoilers, but clearly there's more coming. This is going to be cool. This is like, I'm, I'm really excited for the second season, but I guess... I mean, there is some social blowback and all of that aside, like, I don't really care. But apparently it is also like the lowest rated Star Wars Disney Plus oh, really? show since they started all this. I've only watched like, the first episode, but I thought it was 
decent. And it gets even better. I do think you should watch it anyway, just because there's some cool characters introduced there. Like, there are some throughout, like, Star Wars lore, there's obviously just some really cool Sith characters in particular that have been introduced. I always thought, like, Darth Maul was super awesome, so... But he was, you know, barely in that that one movie and got murdered. Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up reading comics to, like, get more of his backstory and, like, his planet and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, there's another cool one that yeah. comes up. I think that's, I guess hot take is maybe not the right word for it. But, like, I really enjoy when I find a show on whatever, like, usually Netflix because Netflix just has, like, insane amounts of content. But you open it up and it's like limited series i'm like fuck yeah because now i know you planned it out to end and not end on a cliffhanger and you're not gonna be like oh yeah we're gonna have a season two here's this like not wrapped up ending and oh it's canceled like (laughs) yeah that's that's true i i kind of hate some of those stories where you like get invested i remember hbo had this show carnival like years ago that i thought it was like kind of supernatural and it was like during like the great depression and so it was all these like interesting social elements to it and it was like this traveling carnival and like it was really cool i think it went two or three seasons super invested and then they were like and we're done and i'm like i have, I have no idea where this goes now high production i guess not enough people were me watching it and then it went away you know yeah. you never get it tidied up that's just something yeah yeah, I, I feel like there's been a lot of shows that have done that to me. The one that I remember from within the last two or three years, I don't remember when I watched it exactly. I watched Resident Evil, which they like always make new shows and movies about. But like there was a Netflix show and it was one season. It was super good and then ended on an insane cliffhanger and then canceled. And I was like, oh, my mm. God. <laughs> yeah, like if you're going to do worst. that, I think you should be required to like have a clause that's like if not renewed we will make like two or three more episodes that will wrap up the story for you (laughs) do you want that though because so many people complained about the last season of game of thrones which a lot of people thought well was rushed it was they shouldn't have done that until the books and everything were done but it's still not out like these people are like if there's no ending and, and, out. and he dies and before he finishes all the books, then fine. Like that ending was terrible. So House of the Dragons. House of the Dragon is pretty good. I'm like halfway through the second season. I know Luckily, you said there you felt like nothing happened. I can it kind of feels like this season is like a in between build up season and like I'm guessing not a lot will happen by the end. I haven't watched it all yet, but Yeah. I would say, like, don't get your hopes up about any tidying or setup necessarily in the last episode. I think it's worth watching the whole season. I mean, just because, like, the effects, like, the dragons are just awesome. And, like, all of that, like, CGI is, like, super cool and still very satisfying to me. Yeah, I'm just annoyed because, you know, it takes them forever to make a season. So it's probably like two years before we're going to get to boot up again. And I just didn't, I didn't even get a cliffhanger, you know, like Mm. anything, like no weird death, no like blow you back and no cliffhanger. It's just like sun's going down now. See you tomorrow. But tomorrow's (laughs) two years from now. It just felt like that. So yeah, super annoyed. Yeah. I mean, every show I feel like takes so long now that it's so hard to like keep the momentum going and especially with shows with like kids like stranger things and stuff like those guys are going to be like 30 before they put out the last season like yeah what are we even doing (laughs) yeah how how are you going to deal with that like i didn't even know there were more seasons because they're already get like kind of aged out yeah i mean i i think they're all like thoroughly like probably 20s by now and oh yeah for sure yeah, they're going to uh, come uh, back with the last season sometime in the next couple of years, I guess, and they'll be playing like, I guess they're supposed to be in high school. There's maybe some of them pass for that still, but... Right. Eleven married John Bon Jovi's son, so that, that's fun. Oh, did she? Didn't anyway, a little, little pop culture thing. Mm. Yeah, so she's technically... I forget her name now. Anyway, Eleven Bon Jovi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> Tangents. Oh, I know what I was going to bring up because we haven't really talked about games in a while because like okay. I haven't 
felt like I've had room to breathe for games and less like I'm playing an old version of FIFA for like 30 minutes once a month or something. And soccer is gearing back up, but I won't bore you with that this time. I've picked up in the last couple of weeks since I got back from Italy because I didn't have it with me. Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like I've been playing this since we started this podcast, but I could be wrong. It's just been a long time on and off. It wasn't out when we started the podcast. Okay. We well, probably you know. were talking about Breath of the Wild when we started the podcast. Probably. And then like, I'm going to get this next one, they finally said. So I'm finally in a mode where I've decided like, I'm not just wandering around, like trying to discover, uh, I don't know, you know, whatever things it would be. I pick like a random thing, like... How much of the deep can I un unveil and how many heart containers can I get? And, you know, random different things like that. Like, yeah, I finally stopped, like, going through all of that. And now I'm like, okay, I'm gearing my character up to, like, beat it, to just get through Ganon and then whatever from there. Because you can't see what percentage of the game you have done until you've finished the storyline. So that's one thing. And also I just think, like, I'm tired of wandering. I'm just going to give myself a goal. And uh, so I'm at the point where I'm trying to get the, I have the fierce deity armor and I want to like level it up all the way, which <laughs> in its own way was funny because you have to like get on every dragon and you have to harvest each of their parts. I don't even know if you know that you can do these things, but. No, I'm like, like five hours into Tears of the Kingdom. So. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So there's like dragons all over the place and there's like one for each element and then there's a light dragon that's like a whole like story part. And for this fierce deity armor, which was also in Breath of the Wild, in order to, like, upgrade that armor, you need, like, some dragon parts and some other parts. And so now I've been working on, I got all the dragon parts I need, which essentially you can, like, ride the dragon through their whole route. And it, you have to wait 10 literal minutes before, like, you can get the next part. You get a part, <laughs> and then you have to wait 10 minutes, and then you can harvest another part. And then you have to wait 10 minutes, and it was like, oh, my gosh. I'm guessing you're crazy. not supposed to, like, sit and wait. You're supposed to get one and come back another time is what they intended, but you can wait for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, the respawning, which basically they just, like, start glowing again, and then that tells you, okay, now you can get a fang. Now you can, yeah. I don't know. But it, it is time-consuming and very specific yeah. on that. But, I again, I've... I've, I've refocused myself because I just found like before I was just, like wandering around and picking these kind of arbitrary things like okay I want to get this armor set or now I want to beat this uh, I can't even remember what half the things are called but there's these like three headed dragon things and okay now I can finally Gliok I think it is or something and I can finally beat those cool now I just like I'm going to finish the storyline just move on with my life yeah I usually don't care about the storyline but I do want to play it more soon because I keep thinking about it like over the past few weeks I've been like I should start this back up because I'm kind of running out of like shows that I care that much about like I'm going to yeah. finish House of the Dragon and then cancel HBO because trying to save a little money and then yeah I'm just like I've worked my way through like everything I could possibly want to watch on Netflix oh, I haven't watched Ripley yet that's the like one left Ooh, um, I like it highly recommend yeah. I wanted to watch that before we went to Italy just because even though it's from the 60s it's it's very cool. Yeah, so I don't know. I just feel like I would enjoy more instead of like just spending an hour or two watching shows like building towards completing a game that I probably should have been playing a lot more than I have. Sounds like more <laughs> rewarding than just being mindless, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, don't know. I mean, it, you know, you're balancing the the arts how about that you know film is an art and all of that yeah. <laughs> you need to you need to give a little attention to the other arts yeah that's true side note about uh what we talked about last episode i think last one was with taylor right we haven't done one since then yeah yeah i've been taking creatine for the past like couple of weeks i guess and pretty much still vaporware <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. don't notice any improvement now maybe there is like my guess is there's like it helps if you're working out a ton like you're a bodybuilder and you can feel the difference between taking it or not when yeah, i work maybe. out like a few times and then drop off the working out for like two months it, negligible benefits yeah i can't see where that would necessarily benefit although i've i've read some things once or twice about like 
some people thinking that it improves like brain power thought yeah i've seen that so i'm gonna keep taking it and see if i feel like i'm like thinking better or getting more work done or i don't know what the like measurements are but yeah that's the key is how do you measure the before and after yeah well i mean you bought it so you might as well use it but in general oh yeah meh yeah we'll see i don't think we really have anything else to cover here so no Folks, we're about a time. Is there anything you want to plug, Robbie, or uh, where can the people find you? <laughs> you can find me at, uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Robbie the Wagner, Robbie the Wagner everywhere. Um, Whiskey.fm, and then there's yeah. many links there. That's the best place. I yeah. Think. Uh, I did switch Whiskey.fm over to the StarPod version, so people can contact yesterday. us there. I actually stumbled across that yesterday because I went to do a site search just to pick some future whiskeys for guests. And I was like, when's the last time we did Old Forester? Turns out like two years. So Mm. pretty good. Yeah, like especially if you only have a keyboard that will type Russian characters, please reach out. I'd love a giant thing of Russian characters or a lot of like porn spam or any of that would be great from the contact form. Please drop by, drop all of that in. Uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I'm not even sure if you're kidding, though. I feel like you've got... Do you got a honeypot in there you're looking to test, or... Uh, don't well, I probably shouldn't yeah. say this publicly, but there is absolutely nothing limiting the contact form right now. Mm. Maybe I should limit it before this episode goes live, because yep. Something it will be... Mind. Someone will just write a script to just ping it nonstop, and that'll just be annoying. See, I was thinking like, oh, is there like an Algolia-like search or something I'd like to add to it to make what I did yesterday easier? Well, we are going to be adding search. So StarPod will have search. And we still need to have someone on to talk about AstroDB because it's like all of these more complicated things are going to be powered by Astro or AstroDB specifically because we'll be able to put all the entities like an episode as a thing. It'll have its transcript. It'll have its guests. It'll have... I guess we yeah. could add a field for the whiskey. I didn't even think about putting that on an episode, but that's what um, I want to do. And I want to, like, yeah, we need to do that. That would help a bunch, content-wise. Yeah, there's a few things. Okay, so here's a call out. We need we need another Astro team member. I don't know. Fuck that until I get a NASA jacket. <laughs> Fred. Yeah. Just saying. All right. Fair enough. TBD, folks. Yeah. I don't know. My brain's fried. So I think we're done here, and we'll catch you guys next time. Boom 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 You've been watching Whiskey Web and Whatnot, recorded in front of a live studio audience. What the fuck are you talking about, Chuck? Enjoyed the show? Subscribe. You know people don't pay attention to these, right? Head to whiskey.fun for merch and to join our Discord server. I'm serious, it's like 2% of people who actually click these links. And don't forget to leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about the show. All right, dude, I'm out of here. Still got it.